Welcome to the Freeman Conversations. I'm Joe Berth Oko, and this is where we take a closer look at the latest stories, trends, and events. The medical community is looking at two very important health updates. One, uh, the emergence of the so-called monkeypox and the detection of the Omicron B8.4. Joining us at this special episode on a Sunday is Dr. Mary Jean Dorece, the Chief Pathologist of the Department of Health here in Region 7. Doc, welcome back to the Freeman Conversations and salamat again for joining us on a Sunday. Yes, magandang araw sa ating lahat. It's always a pleasure to be able to share some updates and uh, maybe address some issues and concerns that are relevant to our times at the moment. Salamat doc, unahin na natin yung monkeypox. Is this something that we should be worried about? It will be kind of difficult to say that we should not be worried, although we have been hearing stories and, uh, you know, our um, leaders in the, in the medical communities, like, for example, the Centers for Disease Control, the World Health Organization, are saying that there is nothing to worry as of the moment. So when I say as of the moment, primarily because the cases that are being reported are still very, very few and far between, although there are really countries that are reporting them now. So that's one. Second would be, should we be worried? Kung yun ang na natin yung sinasabi nila na huwag tayong mag-worry, I would still say that worry is the caution that will, uh, you know, propel us to be able to do the things that we should be doing in prevention or maybe planning so we will not be caught off guard again. Mm-mm. And we should be learning from our experience with COVID-19, right, Doc? Yes, that's correct. When, you know, remember the Wuhan virus way back in December of 2019 when it started to come out, everybody was saying, do not worry about it. It's not going to happen to us. It's not going to enter our shores. But then where are we right now? So meaning Mm-mm. to say, that's correct. Monkey pox is not yet in our shores. The numbers are still very limited for us to to be, you know, very, very concerned about it. But it's always best to educate our people so, you know, awareness is already there. Mm-hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, Doc. As, as we speak um, today on a Sunday, uh, wala pa talagang nag-detect na monkeypox sa Pilipinas. Um, they are none. reporting There's cases none. in the U.S., Canada, and the United Kingdom and other parts of Europe. That's correct. There is none yet, Robert, no? So, ibig sabihin, the, w, uh, the Department of Health National already issued an advisory dated May 20, no? Na wala pa talaga tayong um, discovered or, um, you know, isolated or um, confirmed cases of monkeypox. Mm-mm. But the Department of Health, Doc, the national government is already taking precautionary measures. Um, we are screening strictly uh, incoming, those entering the Philippines. What are the steps we're taking uh, on this, Doc? Can you please uh, explain to us? Yeah, but the, remember, this is something, uh, you know, similar to magkapatid ito, magkamag-anak na small pack. Mm-hmm. So, very difficult really to say na the screening process na we will have will really say na you may or you may not have a monkey pack with you. Remember that it being a virus, it will also have a similar presentation to those who have other viral illnesses. For example, fever, headache, muscle ache, you know, weakness. So, meron pa nga sabi, source root, pwede din sa kanya, which are, you know, very non-specific for a particular disease. What is significant here, though, is aside from all of this road room, no, yung sinasabi natin mga symptoms, meron tayong kinatawag na lumalaki yung ating mga kulani or the lymph nodes. That's the one that will actually set it apart from small packs, no? The lymph adenopathies or yung paglaki ng ating mga kulani kasi dyan nakikita lang siya sa monkey pack. And of course, rushes. So there's gonna be a series of events in the rushes, no? Magsisimula siya ng macular, magiging papular, nakakaroon ng vesicles, yung parang tubig-tubig dun sa loob, no? And then eventually magiging pustule siya. And magkakaroon ng stabbing, yung parang parang matatanggal na yung mga dry skin doon sa kung saan yung tumubo yung mga butlig-butlig na meron ikaw. Doc, um, 
according to the uh, statement issued by the DOH central office yesterday, uh, the monkeypox virus, is, if I may quote, is transmitted to humans through close contact wounds, body fluids, respiratory droplets, uh, close contact with an infected person or animal or with contaminated materials. Um, can you please define to us ano yung close contact exactly? Biglang sabihin nun, Jobert, eh, ako ngayon may katabi ako. No, katabi ko talaga siya kasi it requires close contact. Ngayon, kung ako ay meron pala noon at lalong-lalo na kung nasa yung rashes ko nag appear na andun na yung mga vesicles, yung mga fluid na nandun na, yung katabi ko ngayon na makahawak kamay ko, uh, close contact eh, kahawak kamay ko, kaakbay ko, o kaya naman kaakap ko, ngayon po pwede na siya ay mahawa sa akin, lalong-lalo na kapag ka nag-break yung aking vesicles, no? na hindi niya alam na meron parang mga fluid, mga droplets na natanggal mula doon. So close contact yon. Pero another way of looking at it, for example, ay meron itong stab. Ibig sabihin nag-dry na kasi tapos na yung 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 um, yung kinatawag natin na series of events sa yung rashes. Cupping na ngayon. Eh ngayon natuklap yon kasi natuyo yung balat eh para gumaling yun siya. Ang mangyayari ngayon, pag hindi matutuong magaling yun, pwede kasi na yung nasa loob ng scab mo ay pwede yung you know, airborne. So pwede na naman siyang maging airborne na nalanghap mo yung kung saan nagliparan yun na merong kinocontain na virus, pwede ka rin kasing mahawan noon. So basically, that is how the transmission of monkeypox will happen. So tinanong mo ako kanina, ano ang pwedeng gawin sa borders natin? Pwede ba nating tanggihan yung mga galing sa mga bansa na meron na discovered the monkeypox? Ang sagot niyan, medyo mahirap. Kasi pag ginawa natin yan, parang sinara na naman natin yung ating borders. Na nagsisimula pa lang tayong makarecover yung ating ekonomiya. Sa pangalawa, tatandaan natin na hindi mo naman talaga malalaman unless you get to see this person having the series of rushes, no? yung kanilang stages, yung kanyang rashes with the typical na mga symptoms na meron siya kasama ngayon lagnat o kaya naman yung pagkakalaki ng kanyang mga pulani. So there is no definite test as of the moment that will tell us na heto meron ka nito na kunyari kagaya sa SARS-CoV-2. During the incubation period, pag nag-testing ito, pwede mag-positibo siya at malalaman natin na pwede siyang makahawa talaga. Kailangan siyang i-isolate. Kay mga kipak, kailangan mong makita muna. And pag nakita mo yun, madadiagnose mo clinically na heto pala yun siya. And then you can obtain samples for confirmation. Mm, okay, okay. Uh, thank you for that, Doc. Um, sinabi niyo po din kanina na uh, one um, difference, major difference from the chicken pox is yung uh, swollen lymph nodes dito sa mag- nagkakaroon ng monkey pox. Um, according din doon sa statement ng DOH yesterday, Doc, yung uh, monkeypox is less contagious and causes less severe illness. Um, please talk about this kasi it might, uh, it might create some sort of, um, yun na nga, um, less worrying on the part of the public and, of course, complacency. Yes, that's correct. Minsan kasi pag dinadownplay natin yung isang sakit, lalo na nung nagsimula tayo dito sa SARS-CoV-2. So ang mga tao, para bang kapante lang sila. That's correct, Robert. No? Kailangan, although ang sabi nga dito, hindi nga ganun kagrabe yung sakit na pwede mong makuha pag ikaw ay nagka-develop ng monkeypox. Kasi in general, gumagaling eh. You recover from it. Because it's a viral illness. But the problem is, when it hits a person who is immunocompromised or who has other diseases, whose immune response is already very low, then you might develop complications. And it is the complications that will become, you know, the driver kung bakit magiging severe yung iyong sakit. Mm-hmm. Ina-advise ng ano, Doc, um, DOH also, according sa statement, parang it's practically the same steps na gagawin in responding to COVID, no? Um, wear a mask, ensure good airflow, keep hands clean, and keep physical distance, your physical distancing. That's very correct. So, yun yung sinasabi natin. Our minimum public health standard 
that we have applied for SARS-CoV-2 should also be applied here. Kaya nga, Jopper, mapapansin mo, no, na kahit ang flu, no, ang flu virus or ang flu illness, kahit na siso na siya, hindi ganun karami yung ating uh, mga reported cases o kaya yung ating mga may complications. Why? Because of the face mask that we have fully implemented until now. It's our face mask that will also again help us ride it out if there are other viral illnesses that will come and enter our country. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah. Um, speaking of viral illnesses, look, we are still in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. And well, at least in Central Visayas, the very good news is that we are able to keep our numbers low um, up to this point in time after our surge in January, February. Um, and our officials are attributing that also um, a large portion of the success through our vaccination uh, program. That's correct. Kaya nga napansin natin, ano? Hinihintay ko bukas is the 14th day from election. So, mm. ibig sabihin, gusto mong makita 14 days after the election where there were so many people in the polling precinct and we even see them clustering, congregating, and then we just came from mass, you know, gathering from the election campaign. And then, yung iba, hindi pa nagsusot ng face mask. I am looking because I'm counting for 14 days, which is the incubation period of SARS cov 2. Kung talaga pang aakyat or hindi aakyat yung ating mga kaso. So far, today, as of today, at Sunday, our cases has remained very, very low. Meaning to say, meron tayong mga positive, isa dalawa lang. It has not really increased in number. But tomorrow, I would really like to see tomorrow and on Tuesday how many cases are added to our positive ones. No? So isa yan, so makikita natin na bakit kaya naging ganon, I would attribute that to our good vaccine coverage ratio. Our vaccines really helped and saved us, you know, in this uh, time where we were already having mass gathering. Second, people are still wearing face masks. Although, number one, there are those who don't, and there are number two who do not wear it properly, no? But generally speaking, marami sa kanila nagsusot pa rin ng tama ng ating face mask. Um, of course, we, we appreciate this very good news. Uh, we are happy that we're able to keep our numbers low. Pero yesterday, Doc, yung update naman, merong na-detect na na Omicron BA.4 uh, subvariant galing sa isang uh, traveler from the Middle East. Is this something we should be worrying about? Um, yes, that's correct. We have a BA 2.1, 2.1, the Omicron subvariant now. And that is also true, true that we have one positive case already identified based on the testing on day 5 upon arrival. Kasi yun yung protocol natin eh. Na kapag ka hindi ka bakunado, kailangan ikaw mag-quarantine sa isang accredited facility, itipest ikaw on day 5. So mapapansin natin, meron na tayong isang ganyan. Um, you know, Subvariants and variants of concern will always be with us. Kasi for as long as transmission is not controlled, magbabago ng anyo, magkakaroon ng problema sa pagkopya yung original na SARS-CoV-2. So there's that genetic um, problems of copying, uh, you know, of the copies. No? So whether should we be concerned or not, for as long as, number one, our containment measures are in place, what are these? Our quarantine facilities. Our um, isolation centers should be ready. Our um, capacity to do testing, our capacity for the hospitals to admit patients who may have COVID or any other complications from COVID. I believe this is really learning to live with COVID already. Mm -hmm. So practically, we're just um, keeping with the same steps that we have undertaken for the past two years. Yes, that's correct, Robert. No? Dalawang taon at kalahati na ganun pa din ang ating pwedeng gagawin because we have seen this to be effective. What is good now is we have better, no? because we have, we are better now because we have the vaccine. Number two, people are more aware. Number three, because we have already been saying that ventilation, ventilation, ventilation. So tatlo yan, face mask, ventilation, good airflow exchange, Number three would be our vaccine. Mm -hmm. Doc, um, if I may just uh, extend the conversation a little bit on this. Yung 
mga another good news also for us is bumabalik na yung mga students natin sa mga eskwelahan at least uh, 40 45 elementary high school students ng uh, schools rather in Cebu City have returned to, well, at least 15 of them have returned to face-to-face classes and merong madadagdag na at least 30 of them come May 30. Ano pong advice natin sa mga teachers, parents, and mga estudyante? Ganun pa din yung advice natin, Jobart, for other um, other enterprises natin no, sa bansa, lalong-lalo na sa Central Visayas. Una, bakuna. Mahalaga talaga yon. We cannot overemphasize getting themselves vaccinated for all the teaching and non-teaching personnel, including the students. No? Kailangan magpabakuna kasi libre at nandyan yung ating bakuna. Pangalawa, huwag kalilimutan yung ating face mask, yung ating paghugas kamay. At mahalaga yung retrofitting ng mga paralan. Meaning to say, there has to be you know, very good air exchanges already. Mahalaga ang hangin eh. Hindi na uso ngayon yung air condition tayo dahil may init ang panahon. Pang-apat, kailangan meron tayong awareness na if you're not feeling well, stay at home. Ha? Do not go report to work or to school when you are not feeling well. Because again, early isolation or quarantine, including testing, mahalaga ang testing natin dito, ay makakatulong talaga for us to be able to catch up the early cases. Mm-mm. Doc, ang, ang sinasabi ng DepEd yung two weeks na uh, face-to-face classes, pagbabalik sa face-to-face classes, is sort of a test um, period of time para makikita yung ano, ano, ano yung mga challenges, mga possible problems kung babalik na talaga full-blown to face-to-face classes. Um, kasama po ba kayo lang sa mag assess after two weeks na mga skalahan? Um, I believe it is a collaborative activity that will be Conducted, no? So we have DepEd or CHED together with that. Still be the LGU where the schools are. Mahalaga yun eh. The LGU should be able to say, yes, I am willing that you will be opening up your schools for face-to-face. Kasi sila yan ang ating mga emergency operation center who should be able to assess that. Pangatlo, the Department of Health, of course, will be there. Kasi kasama naman tayo sa pagbibigay ng mga recommendations. And uh, hopefully, all these recommendations will also be put in place. Mm-hmm. Doc, finally, uh, meron ang available na second booster shot for the medical uh, frontliners, our healthcare workers, as well as our senior citizens. Tama po ba? That's correct, Joker. We have started that. Actually, nung naaprobahan ng HTAC, no? at nag-release sila dun sa guidelines na binigay ng ating NBOC, the National Vaccine Operations Center under USEC near Nakapotahe, under also the leadership of Tech Galvez and Tech Pinsisot, ay kagad-agad naman, in-implement naman natin yan. Provided lang na yung vaccination sites are ready to accommodate the second boosters. Alam naman natin na ang second boosters, dalawa lang ang ating pwedeng bigyan yan. Ang ating mga medical frontliners and other frontliners under A1, kasama dyan ang ating mga senior citizens, at dalawang klase lang, dalawang uri ng bakuna ang pwede, either Pfizer or Moderna. Pag Pfizer, full dose. Pag Moderna, half dose. Mm-mm. Doc, kailan kaya magkakaroon for the general public? Ang second booster? We're really, we're, we're really you know, looking forward na ibigay din yan sa ating general population. But as it is kasi, we are also limited by the fact that we have to follow Centers for Disease Control Guidelines including the release of the WHO on whether the general population should avail of a second booster or not. Okay. Okay. Doc, uh, your state message po sa publiko uh, with uh, monkeypox in our midst as well as the new subvariant ng Omicron. Yes, thank you so much for this opportunity. No? Inaanilyahan natin yung ating mga kababayan, yung mga nanonood sa inyong programa na Ito nga eh, lahat po ng mga sakit na yan, whether it's monkeypox, whether it's a uh, Omicron subvariant, or whether whatever viruses that may come up, no? because there will be a lot of them. These are emerging and re-emerging diseases already. Ang mahalaga ay awareness, ang ating participation, because this is a shared responsibility. Dahil po tayo, nasa mga kamay po natin yan, hindi lang sa gobyerno, paano natin labanan ito? So how do we do it? Okay, education, the importance of knowledge because it will empower us. Number two, following our minimum public health standards. Mahalaga po yan. Pangatlo, pag-available yung bakuna, magpabakuna po tayo. 
Salamat once again, Dr. Mary Jean Lorece of the Department of Health here in Region 7. Doc, thank you for joining us again on a Sunday and God bless you po. Salamat. Uh, thank you so much. Good day to everyone.